As a biophotonics engineer, I create new microscopes, putting together puzzles where the pieces are lasers, lenses, and photodetectors in imaging systems that can visualize cancer cell nuclei. Visual sensory information can guide the surgical excision of cancer, but there is a healthcare need to make the technology faster, cheaper, and more precise. The way we do it today, the gold standard, is both slow and difficult. But if we could guide the blades of surgeons with real-time cellular vision, we could greatly improve the cancer care for 3 million Americans diagnosed each year and save $3 billion annually. Towards that end, colleagues and I developed a microscope that provided really bright contrast to cancer cell nuclei. Compared to the previous poor contrast, the cancer cells jumped off the image like stars in the night sky. Even tiny tumors that used to hide out became detectable. For the chemists in the audience, the mechanism of contrast is acridine orange molecules intercalating between the base pairs of DNA, staining nuclei, and thereby labeling cells. But let's just look at some images. In the epidermis, we have bright cells in a cobblestone road pattern. In the eccrine gland, the cells form this snake-like coil. The sebaceous gland are like these balls of sebum, which is the oil that produces pimples. And here are some tumors. They look like spiny porcupines because the nuclei are elongated, crowded in there. So after that quick pathology session, the cancer cell type should stick out like a sore thumb to you. And in fact, the technology worked very well in the hands of the medical doctors on our team who had been trained to interpret this new contrast. But there was a problem spreading this idea to the broader medical community, who had not been trained on the contrast and didn't understand what they were looking for. In the brief training session required to appreciate the diagnostic value, the attention was lost and progress was halted. So I wanted to figure out a way to present the new technology in their visual language so the retraining would not be necessary. You see, the medical community is trained to read images like this, where these pink and purple colors come from the physical stains that are used in microscope slide preparation. That nice purple color comes from the hematoxylin stain, which is derived from the bark of the logwood tree, which is cut down in rainforests. And eosin, the pink stain, labels pretty much everything. What if we could take the new technology, which is black and white, and make it look like these colorful images. So we stepped back and redesigned the new technology to mimic precisely the functions of those two stains. In addition to what you just saw, we added a second contrast mode, reflectance mode, to counter contrast the first one. So it's contrast, counter contrast, contrast, counter contrast, and voila. Translational research is the translation of a new technology from the research bench to the patient bedside. Bench to bedside translation works best if the new technology meets a healthcare need without the uncomfortable need for retraining. Technology won't change the world with just one inventor. It needs to spread. Technology spreads most rapidly when the new technology doesn't completely reinvent the wheel, but rather tweaks it in a way that is recognizable and thereby makes the change less uncomfortable. If the first step is inventing a new technology, then the second subtle step is creating a way to make that technology easy to adopt. I'm Dan Garo. Check out more of my inventions at dangaro.net.